Guys, Lexi I'll save a game with North Fagan's top five. Now I've done 90 cents and I've done top five 80 cents. Now I should do an album I want to do top five 70 cents. So as you can see, I've got my 70s that I have on my suit with the, the peak lapels and the, the turtleneck and the hair. Normally, you know, I wash my hair and I keep it thingy and I get conditioned on it. I do it just before I do it every morning, but I also do it just before my videos so it doesn't not as much of a mess. Uh, but I say to leave it, so I've got the whole Ron Burgundy, you know, a disco still look. Yeah, Ron Burgundy. Hello, San Diego. <laughs> Keep on smelling fly. <laughs> that was the worst Ron Burgundy ever, but never mind. I will try and master it, you know. San Diego. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. Enough of my foolery and my 70s clothes, you know. This goes to. It's coming after you. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. So, number five on my list is Grey Flannel by Jeffrey Bean. From 1975. Now, a lot of people be going, why the hell is this on his list? You guys know I'm completely unbiased. I don't. I'm not biased at price or anything. You'll never catch me saying like, if a smell is really just bad quality smell, I will say that's crap. If I don't like a smell, but I know it's a good smell, I will say I don't like this, but it's a good smell. I hate to be able to just go, this is old man. Best sellers aren't old man because they were best sellers and they're best sellers for a reason, in my opinion. So this one, I don't like this one. I'm going to be quite honest, I don't like it. I wish I did. It's, it's, it's something I would like. Fresh, watery, like being walking through the English countryside with a, with a stream and stuff, you know, wearing Wellington boots or that. I really dig that. And I do get that from this, but it's just not the sort of fresh, watery I expected. But from 1975, this took balls. In the 70s, barber shop this, barber shop that, patchouli this, patchouli that, leather this, leather that, tobacco this, tobacco that. And this thought, Fuck this, we're going to be different. And this took balls. Now, this was a real favourite back in the day. This was, everybody like loved this. And it's a good scent, projection, longevity, a good, this is a, quite a good quality scent. I'm not going to lie. This is a really well, well made, well blended scent. In my opinion, I don't particularly like it, but I can tell that it's a good scent. So, I have to say, just for that, it's a good scent, even though it's not my favourite. And for the fact they had the balls to go different, uh, go a different direction, Jeffrey Bean gets number five, Ray Fowler gets number five on my list. Bear in mind, back in the 70s, the barber shop scents were like the one million of today, and this was the sort of, you know, only the brave, and this was the black excess of the day, this went a little bit different. So, yeah, number five, Grey Flannel by Jeffrey Bean, 1975. Next up, Javonchi Gentleman. People will probably aren't surprised to see this on this list, but, I mean, really, and a, a lot of people will probably be surprised this isn't my number one, because this does get a lot of love. Now, one thing... This is just, this is, not, this is like Jeffrey Bean, this is an album that took a lot of guts. Being nice to the 70s, you know, everyone's like, patchouli, oh, that's what dirty hippies wear and stuff like that. So Givenchy are like, hmm, people don't like hippies? Hey, let's release a designer fragrance that smells of patchouli that people associate with hippies. That just took balls. And this is it. Projection, outstanding. Longevity, outstanding. Overall smell, outstanding. Now, there's a lot of arguments between what one's better, this or Polo Green. This is this gets a vote in my opinion because Polo Green came out was it 1976, 78 I think I'm trying to remember when Polo Green came out. There's so many dates I'm just blah. but it came out after this. So if anything like this, a Giovanni came up with an original idea. They start from scratch and went, we want it to smell like this. And Polo Green were like, oh cool, oh Giovanni smells like this. Well, how about we change it a bit so it smells like this? So they had a sort of you know they had a sort of framework you know sort of skeleton to start with. Whereas Givenchy just started, they had a drawing board and some ideas to toss about, that was it, so I think they deserve the credit. This is a great scent, this is probably the best patchouli scent on the market, um, you know, out of all the patchouli scents out there, this is probably one of the best, if not the best, so do check it out, I got this for a great price, it was 20, I think it was 22 quid in boots for the 50 mil. so yeah, really really good scent, um, best seller for a reason, don't, don't associate this with the new gentleman only, nothing alike. So that's number four. 
Gentleman by Givenchy. 1974. Uh, and anyone calls it Givenchy, I will punch you. <laughs> Google's there for a reason. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Anyhow, number three in my list. Jovan Musk for Men by Jovan. My God. This, this really sort of changed my outlook. And this was so cheap. This, this is an eau de cologne spray. This is an eau de cologne spray. Um, and this is what I like about a lot, a lot of 70 cents bring out eau de toilette versions. Whereas Jovan stuck with eau de cologne. They didn't, they didn't sort of jump on the bandwagon. They kept the original stuff. Now this has been reformulated. This one's in 1973, uh, same year as Packer or Bamp or Rom. This one has been reformatted, it no longer has real musk in it. It's also got the cheesiest box ever. Um, if I knew where the box was, I'd actually bring it out. I should have thought of that beforehand. <laughs> but the box is like, Jovan invigorates you with a smell. It's the most attractive scent ever and blah blah blah. It's like, you know, borderline high karate advertising. <laughs> but, really. Um, even though, even with the synthetic musk in this, it still smells great. I was very, I, I was a wee bit disappointed the first I sprayed it on, it was sort of floral. I was like, this isn't really what I was expecting. It was nice, but you know, I was expecting something a bit better because this gets a lot of hype. Everyone talks about, oh, you've earned this, you've earned that. And when I tried it, I was like, is this it? But after a while, it really turns out it's dark, musky, manly scent. It's great. I love it. Um, it's not the best projection longevity. It's better. It's actually. Um, my father wears this and it actually lasts longer than him than it does on me so I can't really comment on that it's skin chemistry but on me it's not the longest longevity is not too bad maybe 6 to 8 hours um, mostly 6 on me projection is good for about an hour then dies away but it's eau de cologne so what do you really expect with this but it's still a great scent and this was again an all these ones that went a completely different way from the sort of standard barber shop so yeah um, it was really cheap for 88ml like spray it was something like £9 so I was like damn so do check us on that if you're looking for something different from the, from the rest of the 70s barber shop, patchouli scents and stuff and tobacco, this is a great one to check out. So yeah, Jovan Musk for Men, 1973 by Jovan, makes number three on my list. Number two. Let's be quite honest, when I show you this, no one's really surprised. This, without question, gets in the top five. Paco Ban Poor Home. This one is regarded as the best Paco Ban scent ever made. Um, it's a tough one because there's really great ones. I still think Paco Band's best scents came out before, before 2003. You know, with uh, this and XS and Ultraviolet and stuff, and even the original Paco. You know, I mean that was, these are great. So a lot of people consider this to be the best one. This was probably my first barber shop scent I owned. Pardon me, this was the first barber shop scent I owned. I actually got the aftershave of this as a present. This one came out in 1973, so I got the aftershave of this as a gift for Christmas, the aftershave splash, and I loved it. I thought, that smells amazing. So I looked for the Eau de Toilette, and managed to get myself some, and my god, it's really, really good. The first thing I heard about this was, uh, and uh, everyone watches the TV show uh, Life on Mars, you know, with Gene Hunt, and Derek Linton walks in, and he goes, oh, what's that? Blue Stratos, and he goes, Paco Rabanne, and I was like, oh yeah. And you know he's talking about this, you know, so... In the 80s version of the show, he wears Dracar Noir. So part of having an argument, and the female cop goes, Well, you can smell the testosterone in the room, and he goes, Dracar Noir, actually, do you like it? I was like, <laughs> So this is a great, this is my first barbershop scent. Really, really good. It has been reformulated, but it's still a pretty good scent. Projection's not bad, longevity is not bad either. So this makes number two in my list. Packer Band Pour Home from 1973. Excellent scent. And number one. Now, what will make my number one? A lot of people might be, a few people might actually be disappointed by this, but really, I think this is as number one. I love this scent. That's At Savo Pour Rome by Lovis At Savo. Now, this one came out in 1978, so it came out a good five years after Paco Rabanne. Many consider this to be the rich man's Paco Rabanne. Like, everything that's good about Paco Rabanne is improved in this. This is like the refined Paco Rabanne. Personally, I think they're two completely different scents, in my opinion. This is a much more refined scent. I actually didn't like this at first. I actually really wasn't impressed with this. I didn't get what all the hype was about. I didn't get why there was getting 270 plus, you know, um, great on base notes and stuff. I thought it was so special about it. And after a while, and sniffing all the scents, I realised how good this actually was. And this was way ahead of its time. Now, it smells like an 80 scent. It doesn't smell like a 70 cent. I'll tell you that right now. I need to try some more of its Savos, the more modern ones, but this one's just awesome. Um, I don't get the best longevity projection, I would get them at 6 hours, maybe 7, uh, 2 hours of projection and really dies down after that, maybe about an hour and a half, really dies down on the second hour. It's not the best, there is an intense version of this which is really hard to find because it's I knew there was problems with the reforms, so they least intense. 
if you can find it, do get it. But this one is still really good. Um, makes number one for a reason. It's a classic 70 cent. Everybody talks about this one. I just don't think it should be compared to Pack Out Band. I've even heard some people don't really realise. Um, some people don't really get the dates right. They just hear it's from the 70s and they presume. So some people presume this came out first. And it's a Pack Out Band is a poor man's at Savile. Pack Out Band came out first. Do your fucking research. <laughs> just saying, okay? <laughs> but really great scent. Makes number one on my list. Absolutely love it. Really good. So do check it out. You can have this cheap. This 100ml, I get the 100ml gift set for 20 quid in perfume shop. I think it still costs that now. Um, so if you want this, do get your ass down there and see if it's still on. It's still 20 quid, because this is great. This is, pardon me, oh, damn stream going off. This is worth way more than 20 quid. This is a great scent. So yeah, that's number one on my list. Also, for the first time, honourable mention from 2003, Reed Gauche by Yves Saint Laurent. I, I, I had to add this in. This is this is a 2003 scent. It thinks it's a 1973 scent. I've heard this being described as old man without the old man. I hate that. I like. I, it's only thing I sort of agree with that. But I would call this 70s without the 70s. A modern take on a classic barbershop scent. Now, this is my number one favourite barbershop scent, but it's not a 70s scent. At Savo is my second favourite barbershop scent. This is my number one. This is just everything I love about all these scents put together and improved. This is great. Longevity is great. Projection is great. It smells great. It's amazing. And you can be had cheap. Don't go out and buy the La Collection, by the way. Don't go out and buy the La Collection. You'll be paying about, what, 50 odd quid, something like that, 60 quid for an 80 ml of this. When you can go online and get the 125 ml original vintage tin for like 30 quid. This original tin cost me 30 quid. Why would I pay more money for a, 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 you know, a, a less cool version when I can get the original tin? So, yeah. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this list. Let's go over them again. Ray Flannel by Jeffrey Bean, 1975. Givenchy Gentleman is number 4 by Givenchy, 1974. Jovan Musk for Men by Jovan, 1973. Paco Band Porom, 1973 also by Paco Band. And number one, the best 70 cent in my opinion, out of my collection, at Saro Pour Rome by Lovis at Saro. Amazing. 1978. And of course, honourable mention, Reeve Gauche by Yves Saint Laurent, 2003. I love how it's 1970 this, 1970 that, and then just 2003. <laughs> so yeah guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're looking to buy some 70 cents, you weren't sure where to start, I do hope this video sort of pointed you in a good direction. And like I said about that Savo, 20 quid for the gift set, 100 mils, do try and get it, really, really good scent. So yeah guys, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, any questions you have, leave them in the comments or send me a personal message. Remember there will be a link to the song I used in the description and also a link to my blog. Um, if you want to find these videos easy, click on my channel, click on playlist and click on um, Freakings Top 5. And I'll be listed from the very first to the very latest. You can also Google me, type in Lexi Ellis, follow by the name of the freaking you want to find, and Google should probably do it for you just right. So, yeah, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and keep on smelling fly.